All right, what is going on, everybody? Physio Trader here, and it has been a wild ride the last several days in the market, really, last several quarters. Um, you know, if, if you've been buying the dip or catching this falling knife, it probably does not feel very good. Um, but I want to lay down a couple reasons and then jump into the stock charts and take a look at why I think that we might actually see some bullish opportunity if we digest the numbers. Now, I know I don't get too much into the macroeconomics. I don't get too much into the fundamentals, although do to a small extent, look at them. Now, several years I've been trading for around four, 12, 14 years or something like that. And in the beginning, I basically was reading prospectuses, looking over the fundamentals, and then switched and went more to just technical analysis. And just because as more and more people become technical analysis or, or technical analysis, analyzers, what have you, um, it, it seems that it just becomes more of a self-fulfilling prophecy and you want to kind of go around that. Now, there are, of course, a, an underlying fundamental uh, nature to it, but uh, there's also a lot of fear and a lot of panic and everything else that's going on right now. So let's talk about the first thing. First thing, CPI, the Consumer Price Index. It comes out, I don't know, every like couple months or something, and it basically is a determining factor or every month or whatever, and it determines you know, what the, the core inflation rate is. Now, a couple things. I, I know I've said this before, and the inflation rate uh, based on the CPI, I believe to be manipulated. So I'll throw that out there as an asterisk first off. I believe it to be manipulated. They make it say whatever it is they want it to say. So if they want the market to look good, they're going to make inflation look bad if they're, or, or low. If they want the market to look too good so that they can start tightening up the, uh, the, the money printer that they printed all the money, now they want to kind of vacuum it all up and suck all that money out, then they're going to make, uh, they're going to make inf uh, inflation either look really bad, which would then you know, further signal say, okay, we need to pick it up. We need to you know, take more out. We need to unload more mortgage-backed securities and stuff like that, those MBS products, faster. Um, but if it's lower or trending downward, you know, so far to give credit to where it's due, uh, Jay Powell and the rest of the Fed, they have not really given us that rug pull. So I don't know why so many times in the market, we are just bracing for this massive rug pull when they haven't really done anything like that. You know, d despite what someone may or may not say about it, nobody's really done that. There's never been this like massive rug pull where it was, oh my goodness, we weren't expecting that. That, that hasn't really happened. And so um, to be fair, I'm not expecting it to happen either. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, fear. I think there's a lot of pan you know, panic and, and you know, pandemonium going on in the markets right now. If you are you know, trading, <clears throat> take advantage of the volatility. If you're swing trading, maybe wait a couple days and see how the, the CPI report comes out. If you're day trading, well, who cares? We like the volatility. It works for us. Um, and if you are a long-term investor, pick companies that you really like that have good balance sheets, have good fundamentals, and that you believe in. You know, it's a product or a service that you use and you plan on using for five years from now, in which case it's probably going to do really, really well. So buy it on the dip. So the, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, um, CPI inflation numbers are sitting around 8.5 to 8.9 right now. And so the expectation I keep hearing on the street is that, or not, you know, reading, uh, is that the street, uh, some people are expecting it to be over 9%, but the expectations that I read from Forbes says that the expectation is actually to go down. Now, if it goes down, I personally believe that it going down is actually going to be a very bullish signal, meaning that uh, and actually, coincidentally, we'll kind of take it back for a minute and let's step back. Um, you know, in the beginning when all of this happened, the Federal Reserve kept, uh, you know, Jay Powell was notorious for saying that he believes inflation to be transitory. We have turned out to find out that that is not so much transitory because he was getting a lot of flack because the timeline he gave us, uh, he never actually gave us a timeline, but people started to say, you know what, you, you seem to be constantly wrong. It's like the broken clocks, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, if you just say eventually it'll come back. Well, that's like the same thing as saying eventually the bubble will burst. Well, no kidding. Eventually it will burst. But, you know, at what point? Five years from now? Five minutes from now? Who knows? So <clears throat> with all of that being said, um, what if inflation does actually start to turn down and all of these stocks that are getting oversold turns out to have more and more people start buying it? And then it turns out that inflation, albeit a little bit late and a little bit slower than we originally expected, does trail down on a slow, steady pace. And it does actually turn out to actually be transitory. And we can actually achieve that, you know, blue moon, uh, unicorn, you know, euphoria of that soft landing. So um, <clears throat> although I doubt that it'll happen, there is still that opportunity. So if inflation, you know, if those numbers do come and again, the expectation is we're currently at 8.5. If we get down to 8.1 or lower, then I, I actually, if we get under, if we get into the 7, 7.9 or lower, meaning that inflation is trailing down, 
I think the market is going to go to a euphoric bounce. Uh, however, as much as I would love that to happen, because you know I, I think a lot of stocks have taken a lot of money off the table, and you know I think in the last three days we've lost like 1.6 trillion dollars in tech alone. Um, <clears throat> I do, however, think that, you know, if you if you look at the daily consumer, even a wealthy consumer, and you sit there and say, you know, does does inflation feel like it's gone down? And most people are be like, no, no. I mean, if anything, it's stabilized. Maybe, maybe we've stabilized. I mean, in the last month, I think gas prices are, are way higher than they were a year ago, but they've basically stabilized, maybe gone down, you know, 20, 30 cents where I live and I live in California. So that's saying something, I guess. Um, so so maybe, maybe, but uh, I'll also be fair and say I really don't, you know, pay attention that much to my, um, you know, what I spend from month one to month two on, um, you know, the grocery bills, things like that, because I mean, they're basically things that I'm constantly going to get. And so uh, I just, I get them and I, I, I used to focus on that. I used to get real worried, but it was one of those things I really can't control. So I don't know. But again, I'm, I'm one person, so that is not indicative of, of everyone else. So the second thing, so inflation numbers are going to come out. I believe they come out actually before the market opens. So, um, you know, by the time you wake up tomorrow, the market is going to have a wild ride, either up or down. Um, I doubt it's flat. If, if the numbers are exactly what they expect, I, th I think the market's going to go up because that the expectations are that it will lessen. Uh, if the numbers are higher than expected at 9% or even, dare I say, 10%, I think the market's going to tank. I think it's going to tank like we have not seen tank in a while. I think it's going to make COVID look like a blip in the next couple of days because I believe a lot of people are just going to, you know what, the Fed's going to get more aggressive, a lot more aggressive, and they're going to turn off. Uh, they're they're going to like supercharge the vacuum, um, va uh, the, the printing vacuum, and we want out. The second thing, <clears throat> and so let's, Actually, let's take a look over here. So here's the, here's the uh, article I was talking about. The rapid rise in inflation is causing the Federal Reserve to aggressively raise interest rates along with the deleveraging of its $9 trillion balance sheet. Um, and so April CPI estimates will be announced Wednesday before the market opens. Expectations for all items uh, rate to drop from 8.5 to 8.1. Now, one of the things to be clear is that there are some things about the CPI data, such as, uh, first off, I believe energy is not included. So, you know, oil is high and, you know, but... But I don't even think that's included in it, which is kind of a shame, but okay. Um, but when they talk about things like meat, you know, it, it, they could pick pork one year, they could pick chicken, they could pick, you know, beef. I mean, it, it, they can kind of curtail this to, to kind of sway whatever number it is they do or do not want. Um, so to, to be determined, uh, to hit a 8.1% month to month inflation rate, uh, will have to fall from 2.3% in January, 2.6% in February, 3.8% in March, which was massive. And then in no more than 1.25, um, in, uh, to, to obtain their goal. And so essentially this is just a chart showing what happened in 2008, nine and 10. Uh, this little blip right here, this is the COVID recession. And uh, here is where we are. We haven't even gotten like a drawdown that you get through these recessions. So um, that'll be ugly. Energy price rose 32% on an annualized basis in March. Uh, gasoline and diesel is, is fairly flat. I think diesel is, is really high right now. Uh, CPI index up 48.2% year over year in March. Uh, but again, it's kind of hard because COVID really threw things for a, a, a route there. In order to hit the 3.3% 3 .3 inflation in December, uh, we need basically flat prices the rest of the year. Things need to go down. The past six months have been a dramatic increase in inflation from 5.4 to 8.5 versus 2.6% a year ago. The last uh, six month-to-month -month rates have been 0 0.83, 0 0.49, 0 0.31, 0.84, 0.91, and 1.34. Now, again, you multiply all of these by 12 to get the, the annual you know, inflation rate. So, again, in order for us to basically not break this trend, we need to be at 1.25 um, to obtain you know, 1.25 or lower. Preferably, the lowest we can go is better. If it gets really low, uh, I, again, I think the market will be parabolic. Um, I, you know, here's to hoping, right? But I, I don't necessarily think that. Um, equates to a 4.8% 4 4 increase over six months and 9.6 annualized. Um, basically, here are the numbers, 7.7, 6.8, 5.8, 5.3, 5.1, 4.8, 3.9, 3 to 4, 3.1. This is what the numbers will have to be, you know, each annualized rate in order for us to obtain the goal to really make it transitory. Now, 
Although I see this happening, I don't see this happening in this year, in the year of 2022. So I think that this this transitory is going to be, you know, the three year uh, inflation transition, because let's face it, eventually people are going to start to feel poor and they're going to stop buying stuff. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I believe the real cure to inflation is stop buying things. So I hear, you know, Biden had his uh, remarks today that said, you know, it, it's the company's fault. The companies are charging. And just because they can charge more doesn't mean they should. That is so silly because the company, um, they don't care what inflation rates are. They, they That is not their job. Their job is to make as much money in return on their investment for their shareholders uh, as possible. So if you're silly enough to buy uh, the same item you would for $1, if you're silly to pay the same item, the same thing, the same quality product for $5, then that business is doing their shareholders a disservice by not charging that $5 or charging more than the original one. Um, again, say what you will about you know the emotion of it, the psychology of it, but to you know who is their fiduciary? Uh, your uh, whatever companies you're investing in, their fiduciary is not the United States government. It's not the inflation rate. It is to their shareholders. That is you know who are they financially accountable to? Their fiduciaries are to their uh, shareholders. So. That makes perfect sense. And so it, that was kind of silly, you know, that, that Biden was kind of placating on that. He's really kind of, you know, placating to, to so many people's like internal emotions and morale. But that, again, a business is the best businesses don't really care about that. They're going to focus on on their job, which is, you know, the return on investment, the return of capital to their investors. So I, I don't think that was a good argument, but um, I, I understand why he said it and, and where it was coming from. So the second thing. And, and again, I do think that it will come back. But the second thing I want to draw your attention to is uh, right over here. So margin statistics. Um, this is something that, whoops, uh, this is something that I hear about, you know, the, the, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, they're, they're unleashing a lot of money off their balance sheets, uh, you know, trillion dollars, nine trillion dollars in assets and mortgage backed securities, et cetera. Um, but here are some really interesting things. I haven't looked at this. This is on FINRA, um, uh, FINRA.org. Um, and, and basically for margin accounts, customers are required to submit basically knowing what their businesses are and, and where the money is. So right now, so this first line, this is month, year, January 22, uh, February and March. Um, I, I think so. I got it. I think it's a couple. And by the way, it's in millions. So 829,000, um, that's like trillion. It's like, I, I think that's like almost 8.29 billion or yeah, 0.8. 0.8 trillion, I, I, I think if that's, if that math is right, that should be it. So let's look at this. Yeah, that's definitely not 800 trillion. That's, uh, yeah, I think it's 0.8 trillion. So here's the debt, the debt balances in margin accounts, the free balances in cash accounts, meaning your cash cannot uh, take a margin meaning there's no margin loan, there's like 401ks, and then free credit balances and customer securities margin account. That's how much cash is sitting on the side, even though uh, it's in a margin account. For instance, I have uh, you know a margin account with Lightspeed, and uh, actually I actually have two accounts with Lightspeed. One of them is a Roth IRA, which would be in this bucket right here. It is a cash account. It, it, there's no margin buying power. Um, and um and my margin account where i'm you know without debt you know I, I close the account every night so um i would be over here and i have no actual margin debt because i don't use any you know even if i'm using it to day trade i'm not holding any overnight and so here's something particularly very interesting and very positive this is what i think is is probably the most bullish indicator right here now again it's a lagging indicator because we're looking at march right here um so i cannot wait to see what april comes and again we're like in the first week of may and and the market's getting bloody, so I'd be interested to see what happens now. But again, before we take a look at the sticks, uh, debt balances. Okay, this is how much debt is on the books. In January, 829, big number. In February, 835, bigger number. In March, 799, smaller number. So the debt balances, the margin debt is going down. And uh, I would say actually pretty fast in one month. I mean, that went up by seven, uh, you know, seven. Uh, 7 billion and it just went down by 40 billion just under 40 billion um again I, if that's if that math is right um the cash balances going up okay we're getting more balances people are putting more cash on the side um cash balances in that margin account again going up so our debt is going down but the amount of cash we have on the side is going up look at this 
take a look at January of 21. Look at that number versus that number. They're almost identical. So let's not split hairs over a billion dollars in the entire world on the, on the you know, New York Stock Exchange here. Um, but we are, you know, a year's difference. Debt balances are down. Look how much free credit there is in those cash accounts. There's more. Unfortunately, there is less money on those margin accounts, and that's basically a lot of day traders lost a whole lot of money in the last two months. And unfortunately, I do think that this number is going to continue to go down. Um, however, if we watch this, just pay attention to one line at a time. If we look over here, January 21, February, I mean, so this is just going linearly uh, for the year. Debt is rising. People are taking on more and more and more and more and more margin debt. What's in your cash account? Going down. We are going down, meaning people have less money on the side. They are just throwing all of their chips to the table and saying, I'm in, I'm invested. And what's in their cash account? Again, going down. So the debt is going up, and what's so the debt going up and the cash in your account going down, meaning you're not, you know, sitting on the sidelines waiting to buy the dip. You are just out there constantly adding to your position. And if your position's winning, you don't care. Um, but that was last year. That was last year, and then in June, July, we saw a dip. We saw a drop, which is why, um, and then we saw a massive ex explosion um, in August, September. And then, so here again, these numbers are dropping. This number's going up. Up until January, from December of 21, and this is after the Federal Reserve basically says, okay, we're done printing money. We got to start reversing course. And that's where the markets start freaking out. We go back up again, January, unloading off their off their books, unloading off their sheets, taking getting rid of that margin debt. And now you're starting to see these numbers climb back up to the upside. So in my opinion, really, really positive stuff here. And so I really do think that we are going to have um, quite a big movement. And, and like I said, I could be wrong. CPI data could come in bad. It could say that the inflation is really bad, in which case there always runs the risk that there is going to be a rug pull. But if there's not... If there's not, there's a lot of people that we just saw right there. They've got a lot of cash on the sidelines, and they're ready to buy the mother effing dip. And I think it is going to go up. Again, I could be wrong. I don't want to sound like I'm you know, overly speculative, but I will say this. I did buy in a little bit of a large, I don't want to say it's a large position, but I took in a sizable position in NVIDIA on the dip. Um, now, if, if these numbers come in poorly, I will unfortunately probably have to exit that trade, uh, and it will be a small loss, although I don't want to take it. Um, however, if I'm right, uh, and this thing does bounce, I think we have a really strong opportunity for, for quite a bit of a reward on that one. Uh, and really anything. Again, I just think the market's dipped quite a bit. We haven't seen the market you know, below 400 in the S&P 500 or anything like that for quite a while. So we are headed that way. But let's take a look. So up here, I've got Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge. Um, this is over here on the left is the scanners. These six charts are linked. We've got the two minute, the 15 minute, the 30 minute, the 60 minute, or hourly, daily, weekly. Uh, total slaughterhouse going in here. Let's start with the S&P 500. So we finally broke through the infamous $400 mark. The question is, is, is it going to stay? Let's start over here with the weekly again. Uh, that's just terrible. I mean, when's the last time we've had four, you know, five, five red weekly candles in a row? I mean, this thing has just been nothing but, you know, poopy pants for the last month and a half. And that is just down, 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 down. You one's got to think a bounce is coming. Uh, however, I don't want to overly speculate on that one either. So it is a it is a weekly chart. So. Ooh, if that's right, that's going to be ugly. Um, however, if that's right, that trend line comes into play here. Like I said, we broke through this, took a while, we broke through this. Volume is picking up over here. Again, that's on a weekly candle. This was last week. This is this week, which is actually quite sizable considering we've only uh, two out of the five days plus tomorrow. Um, if this thing falls and we go down to 360, that actually might be the trend of all trends to, to watch out for on the S&P 500 because... Look at this infamous 200 period um, that I think is going to act as a mega support boom um, on the weekly. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Could be wrong. Uh, really, I think tomorrow is going to tell us a lot. But then again, um, that's a weekly chart. Looking over here on the daily, I drew this trend line a long time ago. So on the weekly chart, 360 was a big deal. 385 seems to be a big deal as well. Um, twice now, looks like the bulls 
uh, are starting to struggle to fight back a little bit, but uh, the, the Bears are still very, very much so in control. Um, the problem is, is that uh, in this particular market, nobody's happy. The Bulls aren't happy. The Bears aren't happy, uh, which is surprising, you know. So I guess if you, like, trade, like, options or you do, like, those advanced, like, condors and stuff, you might actually like this market. But most people are very disappointed altogether. And if that's the case, then just take your money out until you feel a little more comfortable. Um, the EQs, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has been slaughtered just as well. Again, looking at the weekly chart, just total slaughterhouse right here. The problem is, is that I don't really know of any, like, mass. I mean, just zooming out. Like, what massive catalyst do we have that is going to reverse course on this one? And it, like I said, I've said before, and I'll say it again. Uh, when these charts uh, get so close, they tend to act like magnets. Initially, they, they suck you in, but then when you get really, really close, they kind of pull you away. Um, and so the question is, is, you know, do we can we go another 40 points uh, on the cues? And, you know, a while ago, I said no, but at now it's like, mm, maybe not. Or, or maybe yes. Um, NVIDIA. She has been a wild ride lately too. Um, NVIDIA starting on the week. Again, nice little hammer candle uh, going on here. But, you know, we had this strong support around the 205, 207 mark. And that seemed to have been broken. It was resistance here, support here, support, support, support. Broke. Um, even if we do get this pop right back to 207, uh, which I do not anticipate will happen tomorrow. Unless, again, we have explosive growth. I would not put it past us to get a candle like this on the weekly, just to get like this massive uptick, this massive surge um, in, um, you know, in NVIDIA. But do I think it's gonna go down again? I hope not, because I'm in, um, but uh, you know, if I have to take the loss, I have to take the loss. It, it, it's not gonna feel good. It's not, they're, none of them do, but you gotta do it because you don't wanna end up like UPST, you don't wanna end up like Netflix, you don't wanna end up like, uh, any of these companies. So again, looking at the daily, same thing, totally doji. I mean, this thing is just all over the place. Once it was bullish, it was, it was one big green candle, and then it was just one big red candle, and then one big green candle again, and then a red candle, and then back there. I mean, really, just a wild, wild ride today. Like I said, Biden was talking, and he he doesn't really move the markets like um, you know previous presidents have, which uh, it could be a good thing. Um, Tesla. Started off strong, ended real soft, had this downpour. I threw in an order uh, yesterday to get filled at 762. I exited that order. I didn't like it anymore. Uh, wouldn't even gotten filled today, but it wasn't active. Uh, at this point, I'm waiting to see if this thing, again, if these CPI numbers are bad, I'm thinking this thing's going to drop real fast. It's going to have a total face plant. Um, but I have said for a long time, if we get Tesla back in the 500s, um, in the 500, as in 599 or lower, I'm just going to start throwing massive parts of my account at it. And if it falls, then, you know, I suck. <laughs> uh, because at that point, I think there's just going to be so many people buying the dip because of because of this right here. Um, you know, every time it dips, it rips way harder. And so um, I'm not really particularly worried about it. But again, uh, and, and I should preface and say that this would all be in my retirement account. My retirement account is actually sitting uh, fairly cash heavy right now. Like I said, I'm waiting to buy the dip. I want to see when all this fear and pandemonium gets out of the way. Um, and if it means I have to wait a little bit longer, that that's fine. You know, cash is trash uh, as an inflationary hedge. But when your buying power gets plummeted in five minutes because stocks have dropped so much, it actually doesn't feel as trashy, if that's a word. Um, so let's get into some of the ugly. UPST lost over 50% of its net worth on good earnings. They were good. It was my understanding that they had good earnings. Uh, I didn't like read into it too much, but it basically they like crushed their expectations. They beat expectations. They beat everything out. But I think their guidance next year was was not as favorable. So, um, but either way, I don't I don't think personally that it was deserving of a 50% loss in value in, I think, about five minutes. Um, this was nasty. If you look at, let's first off, let's look at this, this because this is ugly. I think it was, what, a high of 400? Let's see, the high of that candle is 401.49, and we got as low as 29 and change today. Um, the low was 29.02, so that is in just two cents. Huh? So... That is, I mean, you can't even like catch that falling knife at that point because you catch it and it just rips your whole arm off. That is, that is unbelievable. And like I said, I think they had good 
earnings. And so this is like the scary part. This is the scary part. And this is to be very uh, frank and very clear with everybody. This is what makes me nervous about NVIDIA because NVIDIA has good sales, good revenues. AMD gave earnings. NVIDIA gives earnings uh, next week or the week after. Um, AMD gave good earnings. It popped for like a day or two and then it's trailing down. Um, Apple gave good earnings. Tesla gave good earnings. Everything's trailing down anyway. So the whole market doesn't really care. You have good earnings. It's bad news. Bad earnings, terrible news. Um, great earnings. Meh. Oh, well. And so, let's see, good RX, is that how you do it? Uh, I think good RX got slaughtered again. Uh, yeah, right here, look at these candles. I mean, just total in your face destruction. And so, well, we're in the 50s. I mean, at one point I actually put on my chart to buy at 20s, at the 20s. Uh, and then I'm, I'm glad I didn't because when we, when, I, when we had this candle, I was like, nope, never mind. And now, I mean, just total smash fest right there. And so um, I think this is a lot of the, the fluff. This is a lot of the, the gluttony that's kind of come out of the market because, um, you know, if you do not have favorable, you know, companies, you don't have favorable balance sheets, you don't have a lot of uh, cash on your books, then it's not going to pair out well. Uh, two companies, uh, Microsoft, I've been eyeing for a while. I think Microsoft's getting very, very close to a buy for me. Um, very, very close. Actually, unfortunately, I threw out an order at like 261 and I never got filled on that one. Um, actually, I threw it out over here the other day, but we never got as low back to the pre-market uh, levels and uh, very well could not get it. Like I said, we have this nice little uptrend over here. This is a 15 minute chart. Let's look at 30. Uh, we've got a small uptrend, but it's already softening. So it's hard to say. I really think the CPI numbers tomorrow is going to tell us a lot. And actually, even if it's bad, so if, if CPI is over nine, I think we're screwed. I think the market's just going to plummet. If CPI is under eight, I think the market's going to go euphoric. If it's under seven, which I do not believe is going to happen, I repeat, I do not think will happen. I think there will be like, total squeezes of all squeezes not like amc squeeze but i think there's going to be a, a massive pop that is going to occur because so many people are just ready ready to buy that dip and uh whoever's shorting it waiting for the this next leg down is just going to get slaughtered which is going to be more buyers like i said a lot of cash on the sideline a lot of debt a lot of margin debt although it's disappearing because as your account loses value you lose you know that margin as much um, however there is a lot of margin on the side and so people are deleveraged uh, which is good. We actually want people to be deleveraged. When when economies are potentially bad, we want to be deleveraged. That way we can use that capital and that risk allocation to build, to rebuild. We don't want to lose on the way down. We want to save on the way down and then buy on the way up uh, or, or to create the way up rather. Uh, however, um, if I'm right, and and I, I actually don't even have that much conviction in it, which is why I said I'm, I'm mainly cash still. If I'm right, then the markets are going to go up. And, but if I'm wrong, the markets are going to get totally slaughtered. Uh, but if I'm right, I think like we've looked in those graphs before that has like the grayed out area, which is an indicator or indicative of, of what was once a recession. We could actually be in that recession right now. Like we're just not even calling it. Um, you know, this recession depression, I think the recessions historically are just going to get a lot smaller now. The last thing I'll say about this is if you are, you know, really concerned about inflation or thinking inflation is going to go down, um, I, you know, one of the things I initially thought and I'm slowly coming to the realization or at least internally processing it this way is that um, the stock market decline and the massive decline we've seen very recently, I do not believe is indicative of how the housing market is going to react. Um, too many people feel that uh, that wealth effect that we have because of how much money they have obtained uh, in the form of, you know, the equity they've built into their home. For instance, you buy a home for 250000 five years later, it's worth a quarter million, three quarter million. Uh, you feel like you have another half a million dollars in your pocket. I tend to look at it as fake money because until you take that money out, it's unrealized, just like a stock. If you have an unrealized loss, it hurts, but until you realize it, it's not real. If you have an unrealized gain, it sounds wonderful, but until you realize it, it's not that great. For instance, uh, like I think Tiger Capital was up, uh, they've lost like $17 billion in the last like three months, which is, um, I think it said it was like 50% of their last 20 years of gains, um, you know, of, of realized gains and unrealized gains. So that, that really hurts. Um, basically just means as they got more money, they leveraged up harder and harder and harder, which can be great for making money, but terrible when you lose money because the higher you go, the harder you fall. Um, but I will say this, I, and again, uh, as a capitalist, and, and I believe in capitalism, and I believe in the capitalist society, you know, we should have the freedom to buy the things that we want. However, however, it is important for everyone to know that as the consumer, you have more power than you think, okay? You individually may feel powerless, but as the consumer, 
if you would if you want housing prices to go down stop paying above ask if you want um, the the cost of your goods to go down stop paying the elevated rates i know that may sound awful but do you really need another new car and now maybe your car is broken and maybe you really do need to get a car you don't need to buy a new mercedes right now you don't need an s class you don't need um the, the new ev you know ford f-150 whatever it is you do not need something like you know, there, there's something about being pragmatic and realistic and if you want prices to go down stop buying over ask stop bidding into this bid war the sellers are very much so in control because as long as you keep buying above ask the prices are going to keep going up again they would be irresponsible not to ask for more money if i were going to sell my house i would ask for the highest price i'd ask for a million dollars i never think in the world i'd get it but if somebody's dumb enough to pay for it i'm going to be smart enough to give it to them so uh, i know that sounds really blunt um and in in many cases it probably should be just that blunt but if you want prices to go down us all of us collectively as a society have to stop being these raging enthusiastic consumers and just wait a minute just pause pump the brakes you'd be surprised what five days of buying no oil would do to the oil industry if nobody bought gas for five days um you'd see oil prices plummeting because they'd say wait a minute wait a minute wait, we want you to buy our products. Uh, and that goes with everything. If people stop buying houses, and I understand there's a real supply and demand problem there. Um, but again, as long as everybody's willing to pay, you know, 150,000 above ask, waive expectations, waive consultations, waive expectations, um, you know, waive credit lines, waive, you know, uh, what is it called? Where you have to, you know, wait contingencies, then uh, as long as you're willing to do that, then then the, the seller's market's not going away. And it's actually going to keep getting worse. And inflation is going to get worse because the people selling their house to these exuberant buyers are now going to have more money in their pocket and they're going to feel more wealthy and they're going to buy more stuff. And it's going to be this, this upward spiral versus the downward spiral that they want. So again, um, if, if you want inflation to go down, we the people need to stop buying so much stuff. And I don't mean just your, your core everything. I mean everything just stop buying stop paying these exorbitant uh fees and uh i think inflation will drop uh, rather significantly that's it for me if you have any questions reach out in the comment section thank you so much for watching i'll catch you all next time